Hi Scorpio, welcome to your reading for February 2019. This channel is called The Witching Hour. My name is Michelle and I'm a witch. This reading is Who is my future love partner? So it's for new love. Mainly for singles, but if you're coupled, you can apply it to a new phase of love coming into an existing relationship. Some white sage for you and me and the cards. Alrighty. Excuse me. I almost forgot to turn off the heat. Okay, so this reading is for Scorpio, month of February 2019. The cards I'm using are the Connolly Tarot, created by Eileen Connolly and illustrated by her son Peter Paul Connolly. I'll be clarifying at the end with a deck called Witch's Wisdom Oracle Cards. These are created by Barbara Michael John Free, Flavia Kate Peters, and they're illustrated by Richard Crooks. And that is my cat tattle. Hello. I'd like to evoke the elements of earth, air, fire, water, and spirit and greet the guardians and directions of the north, east, south, and west. I invite the divine and all our allies and spirits, our guardians, angels, spirit guides, ancestors, and loved ones in spirit. Pray that we are given clear discernment, truth, wisdom, for our highest path in love and for the highest good of all. So may it be. Thank you so much for your love and support, Scorpio. I'm glad to see you again. I think February is going to be a really good month for romantic love. A lot of good energy in the air. This reading is for enlightened Scorpios. Almost done. Thank you for your patience. Please remember to uh, like, share, and subscribe. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the bell notifications. These are ready. Okay. Just cutting the deck. sitting on the glasses. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Page of Wands. So this is the underlying energy coming in. So if you're feeling you're just starting out with something, still enthusiastic, messages coming in. That's the underlying energy. The person of interest. Who is coming in is a hard worker. Could possibly be Virgo for you, Scorpio, unless Virgo is also in your charts. And this person resembles you in character, that they're hardworking, diligent. Just get the word forthcoming. Like they, they're very candid, but tactful. They're honest. Mature. That's what I'm picking up from this card. I think they're in a re they want to be in a long-term relationship. How you meet one another is feeling stuck. After a long period of feeling stuck, coming out of it. Or possibly helping each other out of it. And I think that's why the underlying energy of the page of wands kind of like you're restarting again entering a new phase of your life. I feel like it was just like more of a brief hiccup for some of you. You could potentially have been introduced by an air sign. I just got, oh my God, I wonder if any of you met on an airplane or at an airport. 
That's so funny. Your first impression of them is that they're transformative. They are, they're different. I just got the word like they're, they're an oddball. They're like a, a unique, quirky, eccentric way of looking at things. Their perceptions are different than the norm. This is a, a big attention grabber for you is what I'm feeling. Um, this could potentially be coming, um, and all joking aside, uh, another scenario. This could be someone that you meet after the passing of a loved one, and this would have already happened. So not talking about any kind of future um, tragedy or anything like that. But I feel like if, if there has been recently in the last six months three, four months, six months at the longest, if there was a passing of someone that you met this person just after that, or, or you're going to, that someone has already passed, and that, and that that is the kind of signal to your attention that this other person, um, this new person of love interest is coming in at this point. So for some of you, that's significant. For some of you, that, that was the passing of a loved one or a friend, someone close. I don't feel that it was, you know, like your, I feel like, you know, your time of bereavement, like the worst part of it is now over, but it was a matter of being patient with yourself, you know, waiting to ride out those feelings. And uh, if that is the case for any of you, I'm very sorry for your loss. That has already happened. And I'm also getting that this person is associated with funerals in general. So aside from anyone you know personally passing, I'm getting, I'm getting like a funeral energy with this person. And possibly a Scorpio. And or possibly a Scorpio. Okay? Or Scorpio in their charts. Their effect on you is that they turn things around. That That's a, a match right there as far as their personality type and their unique way of seeing things, the momentum they create. It's very different and unusual, at least different than your personal norm. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's no standard, you know. It's your personal norm. And I don't know. It's just a, like a very, very welcome change, a very welcome change after whatever the phase is that has passed. And the nature of the relationship is the sun, soulmates. So quite literally, very healing. Very healing. I get that this person, in, for some of you, in some ways, this person is ready to retire or change jobs, or just starting, starting their own business, like a craftsperson, or may do that as a hobby, but very passionately into it, very devoted to it. And um, this brings an element of surprise to the relationship, an element of warmth, because everyone who pursues what they truly love is usually genuinely happy. And that kind of, I'm getting the word sweet spot. It's like they're living in their sweet spot, and this is very attractive to you. And that you want a life like this. This is the overall effect, is that you'll both end up living in the sweet spot. I honestly don't feel that there's going to be a major crucible for this relationship coming up. I really don't. I haven't drawn the card yet, but um, usually there's a crucible for every relationship. You know, it's where you're tested. It's where you're tested. People can call them challenges or what's crossing you, blah, blah, blah. To me, it's, um, and those are, those can be applied. Uh, how I apply it is by using the term crucible where things are in a cauldron and, and they bubble up to the surface to get skimmed away. And they're the things that either drive you apart or bring you together. It's a test. It's like a test. It's what tests or triggers like your issues or theirs. It tests the strength of the relationship really is what it does. And I don't feel any major crucible for you and 
for the crucible, you get the car card of the star. So I really don't feel, I mean, you've got one, two, three. This is your fourth major arcana out of nine cards. So uh, it's like, I, I honestly don't feel it. It feels more like to me, it's like, well, what's next? Let's go on to the next thing. Let's, you know, um, the only other thing I got was, um, do either of you individually feel like less ambitious than you should be? in that respect. Um, that's one thing I'm picking up on and that's not for everybody. Some of you might be in a crisis of faith and you need, and you and the other person might have dissimilar philosophical or spiritual views and yet what you might have to look at instead is their work ethic and their personality and their approach to life. And that that is their spirituality. It really is. And it's a more practical, hands-on type of thing is the energy I'm getting from this person. They're more on the practical, living out their spirituality in the more um, practical, kinesthetic way. Like a hands-on, literally. And they might not know what to say to you in your loss or in your aspirations. And that's, that's about it. So it's like, it's almost like spirit is saying to you, look at the more practical things about this person before you go to them with a need for uh, any kind of spiritual support or support in your aspirations, okay? Remember to kind of um, take a step back and um, Reacquaint yourself with their nature and personality before you ask them for what you need regarding those areas. You kind of have to remind yourself that their spirituality is lived out in a different way than yours, so you have to approach them a little differently from a, a different perspective before you say, okay, I need this. Um, and lots of people would think that that's a major big deal, to not have the same spiritual um backgrounds or beliefs but what you two have is a very i'm feeling it very strongly is that you two have the same philosophical understanding and approach to life and as long as you meet each other on that level ground anytime you need encouragement from this person they're going to be able to offer it to you and give it to you really in a very solid way and also what i'm getting from spirit is to make sure you ask them um Ask them for the type of support you need. Ask them. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Okay. The overall result is the Eight of Cups. For some of you, you might go into a short-lived relationship with someone who teaches you the les lesson of what I just talked about, the difference between spiritual standards and philosophical ones. And you're going to make your peace with it is what I feel. I don't feel that this is, um, there's any, I don't feel that there's any animosity in this parting. If, you know, if those are, that's only for some of you. For some of you, it was, to be with someone and connect with someone in this grieving period, like a transitional relationship. Um, I do not feel that this is a rebound relationship. I feel that it's a transitional one. It's a transitional one. They bring the sun back into your life. It gives, it renews your hope because that's what you needed going into the relationship. And then you part ways very amicably. It's like they came in just for that specific time just to bring you peace. This could be an Aquarius person for some of you. You might have Leo in your chart also is what I'm feeling. But what I'm getting mostly is that this is a very nice person. I think it might just be that for some of you, when you don't have the spirituality in common, 
it redefines the relationship for you and you like it better the way, in the redefined way. And um, I don't feel either of you wanting to force the relationship to be something it's not. That's specifically for some of you. Seeing if I'm getting anything else off of this card. I think for some of you, you are going, the, the grief period will be ending. And this person will have inspired you to make a conscious decision to move forward with your life. This is a person who helps you heal yourself. And a person who helps you in a very unique way. I'm feeling from you who this applies to that you've never had someone else help you in this way to move on from sad times or low energy times or a low vibrational time. It's like you're ready to move on to a higher vibrational era in your life and you are moving on from there. Um, let me see. I just feel that this moving on card, this Eight of Cups, has such a good feeling to it. There's a lot of peace. This person is a hard worker. They're diligent. They come to you at a time just when you really needed them the most. Right before things. You know like when you've been in a slump in whatever way, shape, or form. Um... The, uh, that you meet a person just at the right time and I feel that that's what this is. This person could be a Scorpio and your first impression of them is that um, they deal with tough situations and help people um, in ways that most people don't. It's like it's a unique kind of a job or a unique way of approaching helping people. Um, and that's why I was getting an energy of someone being like a funeral director, um, that type of thing. It's like a very unique position in the community. It's not just a vocation. It's, it's a very specific type of interaction with people who are undergoing a very specific type of circumstance in their life. That's what I'm getting. Um... Does that pertain to all of you? I, I, a great many, I would say. Possibly not all of you, but a great many of you. Your, your impression of this person is that they're heaven sent. Truly heaven sent. Like, I'm just, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm, I, I feel that this is my soulmate. I really feel that I don't care what happens. I don't care about defining the relationship. I care about just loving this person. I care about loving everybody, loving myself. Um, it's like a whole new phase of life for you. Um, I honestly don't, I still don't feel anything in this crucible. It's almost like, what are we going to do next? You know, what positive thing are we going to do next? The only problems you'll ever have is, is choosing what to do next. I mean, how often does that happen with people? So count yourself lucky because it's like you really are. It's, uh, I don't know what to say. You're, thank, thank your lucky stars. You know what I'm saying? Very, just, just wonderful. And I feel that you kind of leave together. It's almost like, let's, let's get the hell out of Dodge. Let's, let's just go. Come on, let's go. And you do. It's like, and you leave the clouds behind you and you look forward to the sun and the rainbows. That's what I feel. And that's, that's, these two cards go together absolutely beautifully. Look at that. You have the sun. It's the nature of the relationship. And this is the result. This is the outcome of the relationship is leaving the clouds behind because you now have the sun. It's like, why do we want to stay here anymore? Let's go. I do. I feel like this movement right after you get together. 
And these are for those of you who are getting it. It's like you know it's a long term. You know this person is just solid, stable, steady, just like your rock is how you feel this person is. Your rock. And it's like, why stay here anymore? Let's go. Let's go. Just everything feels so new. Let's be somewhere new. Even if you just move down the block, it doesn't have to be anything drastic, but it feels new and just different. And it matches all the energy of the relationship and what's going on and the overall effect. Oh my God, Scorpio, can you get any luckier? Come on. The most magical number nine of cups and the wish card. It's like your wishes are coming true, Scorpio. I don't know. And, in the, and because your first impression of them is that they're like you, but different. It's like they're the mirror of you. So it could be a bit, very well could be a twin flame. And with the sun card, it's like it's optimal. The relationship is optimal. Oh my God, I'm getting goosebumps. This person's really cool. And the what you're going to learn is about collaboration, about getting support. You're going to have faith. I feel like your faith is going to change. And it's going to change your life path, too. It doesn't mean you're going to give up old standing beliefs that you cherish at all. It just means it's going to change. Change as in becomes something so much better. Same, but better. Do you know what I mean? It's like it, it grows or expounds or expands in a way that you could never foresee as being possible. It's like, I'm leaving behind my old life. I'm really doing this. And the first thing you say is like, I couldn't have done this without dot, dot, dot. And it's like it helps you recount and re recollect, recollect all the things that came into being and into position to help support you find this person. I just keep seeing these stars on the pentacles, on the three of pentacles. And it's like, the three of pentacles is like collaboration and design, collaborative effort. But I keep seeing these stars on the pentacles as being stars in the sky, connecting the dots. And it's like everything was in alignment. And as soon as you're with this person, what you learn is like, oh my God, it was cosmic. It was divine intervention it was planned this this and this was supposed to go this way so that I could meet this person and then we could be happy and um all of this it's like it was all you see it as like a divine intervention or a plan is what I'm getting I I just can't I can't see it any other way I'm not getting any other feeling about it so it's like well it has this feeling of certainty to it. And that's why it's the only feeling there, because it is certain, I guess. <laughs> right? I just can't get over that star card being in the position of the crucible, because it's like, that's where life's going to test you. It's always going to be good. And I'm almost afraid to say that, but it's almost like you're going to be feeling like our problems are normal now. There's nothing we can't handle together. It's like, well, what's the big deal? Uh, what's the worst thing that's going to happen is that we don't take something too seriously enough. And it's like, you're not going to feel bad about that at all. Because I think you both know, with this death card, the trans transition card, you both know what's important. With this sun card, you both know what's the most important. You know? And so it's like, you won't put things in such a bad perspective. You're always going to have hope. And maybe one of you will have more faith during a hard time than the other does. And then another thing comes up at some point and the other person has more faith or something like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, I just don't get a negative feeling from it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd have to try really hard. And that's never happened to me before in any of the readings that I've ever done that have this card of the crucible. Any. Never. Once. <laughs> so, um, you count yourselves lucky. You know, with this Wheel of Fortune and the star card, count yourself lucky. I mean, I just keep wanting to look at it. It's like, wow, how lucky am I? You count your blessings. It's like you remind each other to count your blessings when things get tough. If they ever do, like, be, get really tough, it's more like normal, you know, normal problems that everybody has. 
and the underlying card for Witch's Wisdom is the Watchtower of the East, the, the energy of spring. This will um, amplify the drawn card, which is air and imagination. But this is specifically about manifestation, clear-mindedness, um, knowing that your dreams will come true. And this is amplifying it, the energy of spring come on and it's a watchtower it's an actual embodiment of a direction and air is the element of the direction of east it's like they go together look how different they are and yet there is no other match for these two there's no other like component that is exactly the same east is air air is east and spring and the color yellow can I say this is a match made in heaven? Can I just say that? I don't know what the heck else to say, except that's just freaking awesome. And I wish I were you. Although I am a Scorpio rising, so we shall see. Anyway, congratulations. I just got to say congratulations to you all because you are in for a really nice time, a really nice ride, no matter... If this relationship is the long-term one that I mentioned or the short-term one, it's like you're going to have a lot of peace of mind and a renewal of energy, a renewal of your life. Absolutely. You're going to leave the bad stuff behind. I mean, you saw me draw the cards. It's like I, I don't know what else to say. You know? So congratulations, Scorpio. If this resonates for you or if this comes to pass soon, um, please comment down below or even email me or whatever. I believe my email is in the about section of my channel. Um, please comment down below. Give me a thumbs up, a like, um, share this video or subscribe or all of the above. If you would like to connect with me for a personal reading or to donate to this channel, which would be very much appreciated, the links for those are in the drop down box below. Go check out my video library to see what other videos resonate for you um, according to your charts or just your intuition. And enjoy. And until we meet again, from my soul to yours, Scorpio, much, much love and brightest blessings. Take care and congratulations. Bye-bye.